Hello everybody, this is Rowing on Empty Food Review. But it's not food today, it's a drink. My name's Cheat, and I'm sitting in a 91 degree room with a jacket on. In other bad decisions, I'm going to tell you about a drink I've got from Rural King. The drink I have for he here today is Frost Stop Red Birch Beer. I was in, let's move this to the side a little, not blocking my face, right? I was going to Rural King a couple days back, and uh, I was looking at their drinks. I've tried some of the Rural King beverages before, uh, namely vanilla caramel cream soda, root beer, orange cream soda, and sarsaparilla. They're all Frost Top brand and come in these similarly sized bottles. And I'm like, hmm, I've never heard of Red Birch beer before. Let's try it. Maybe it'll be fun to try out, learn a little, lose a little, and have a new experience. So anyways, I go there. I grabbed me a bottle, Red Birch Beer, got a little bit half to it, it's a pretty big bottle. From here, it looks like it's half my size. It's just a matter of perspective, it's not really half my size. It's just, you know, closer to the camera than I am. Let's get out of your face. Anyways, so uh, I got this, and it's very cost, it's, it's very cost effective, look at this, 139 right here. It's not mirrored, I made sure to check. So you're definitely seeing 139 correctly there, I believe. Right. And I'm getting 139 for 32 ounces. And according to my math here, let's just pull this in front. I'm paying 139 for 32 ounces. So that comes out to about four cents per ounce. And my traditional favorite beverage is a w Cream Soda or Root Beer. That's a toss up for which one. I like both, but um, Root Beer is more readily available for me. Cream Soda is like a special treat every now and then. Right? That comes out to 179 for 20 ounces, which is nine cents per ounce. That's a pretty big difference. Crunch the numbers, you get about um, this being 51% more cost effective than uh, AW, which I think is very nice. And you, as you can see here, they have the price written on the bottle, 139. Right? It reminds me of Arizona sweet tea, how they have the price written on the can. What you read is what you pay. And I think that's very honest marketing. I don't want to go to the register and be surprised with some kind of tax. I like to know exactly what I'm paying for and how much I'm paying for it. And this is why I appreciate it. So, 139 It's a big bottle. It's pretty hefty. And, you know, it's some solid plastic. This plastic is strong. You're not going to get any CO2 leakage to decarbonate your beverage. This is, this is not cheap made in China plastic. This is good American plastic. Is that a big bottle, nice label. Um, going by the name Red Birch Beer, the label has a red cover, uh, cover, color, color. I mean, I'm sorry for stuttering. Color. Um, it has this red color, and I think it's very nice. Fits the aesthetic and the theme. And yeah, you have a picture of a nice frothy bottle of what I can only assume is Red Birch Beer. It says draft style and extra creamy here, right? Some adjectives to describe it, and I'm a fan of extra creamy. Thing is, when things are extra creamy, sometimes you're just drinking cream, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. I need to have some substance. That's why I'm not a fan of whipped cream either. It's just sugary filler. I'd like to have the real dessert, not just whipped cream. Draft style. I'm not 100% familiar with draft style. What is it? I'm not sure. Should I have researched it? Probably. But you know what? I'm not going to try to explain draft style, because I wouldn't know it. And I wouldn't want to lie to you about something I'm not 100% sure of. So, look it up for yourself. Do some research. Learn a new thing. Have fun. Anyways, let's, uh, let's examine what Red Birch Beer is before we get into it. So on the back it says, there's a little blurb right here on the back. You can pause the video, read for yourself. I don't know if the glare is going to kill you there. But I'll read it to you if you couldn't read it. A member of the root beer family, which is nice, I'm a big fan of root beer, birch beer may share some of the taste similarities, but has a unique flavor all its own. That's great. If I'm a fan of root beer, and this tastes anything similar to it, I'm sure I'll be a fan of this too, but no, we won't know until we drink it. But I'm very curious as to what this unique flavor is. I've never heard of red birch beer before. And um, it, it's this is a learning experience from you and me and whoever else is here. Maybe your mom, your dad, your dog, your cat, who knows? Keep going. Real birch sap is harvested from the birch tree, and the oil is distilled for a wonderfully distinctive birch flavor. 
So I think this distillation process has something to do with the draft. I don't know exactly. Only thing I've heard about draft is like draft and like IPA. I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think it'll completely matter here. We add real vanilla and other premium ingredients to make Frost Stop extra creamy, red birch beer, another treat that can't be beat. Well, Jeet loves treats that can't be beat. Anyways, so it mentioned real birch sap. So I decided to do a little research as to what exactly the whole birch sap process is. Well, in root beer, they use like oil and essence extracted from roots and sarsaparilla and mint, I believe, to create uh, the flavor we all know and love. Birch beer is a similar process, but instead of using sarsaparilla and peppermint, they use birch, right? Thing is, it's a little bit more time consuming and difficult to source birch sap. Uh, I'm reading here, this is a source from Wikipedia, I'm going to cite your sources, no plays from here. Uh, it takes about 100 to 150 more liters of birch sap to make one unit of birch oil or birch syrup than it does maple uh, sap to make maple syrup or maple oil. So there's a little bit more work, but you know what? Nothing good comes easy. Um, I'm looking at it here. Uh, birch beer is, is pretty uh, common in northeastern United States and Newfoundland in Canada. So it's an northern beverage. Made it way down south, but I'm sure it'll be just as good. Uh, so there are a couple of examples they have here. Black birch being the most common source of extract. I don't have black birch. This is red birch. So I'm expecting a red color from the beverage, not a black one. But other colors they say is red, brown, clear, and most curiously, blue. I'd like to know what blue is, because I've never drank a blue beverage other than blue Kool-Aid and probably a raspberry fanta that's pretty good can you try it so let's just get right into it we have this bottle here and if you look at the top right let's just zoom in for you right there see it right here a little deformation that uh that little convex nature of this cap it's caused from the co2 in the bottle bubbling up and applying pressure to the inside of the cap to make it bubble up like that. So that's a sign of a heavy amount of carbonation in this drink, but also a pretty firm plastic because it didn't pop, right? This isn't my first time handling this bottle. I've shaken it a little bit, so some of the CO2 is uh, bubbling upwards a little bit ago. Not now, it's settled. But um, none of it escaped, hopefully. And that bubbling is a good sign that it's holding back most of it. I like my drinks pretty carbonated. I don't, um, when I have a soft drink, I don't like it to be not very carbonated because then it just feels a little stale, don't you think? You agree with me? It feels a little stale and too soft. I want a little kick, right? Someone says, it burns back your throat. Say, hey, gee, don't drink this all at once. Take some time. And I'd say, thanks, Soda, for looking out for me. I appreciate you and your carbonation. And they'd say, no problem, buddy. Drink away, but take your time. I just think it's very courteous of carbonation to do that. Well, anyways, uh, so it's pretty carbonated, but you know what? The longer we let this sit, the higher chance of leakage, because no matter how airtight you think a seal is, it's always seeping a little bit, right? So it's a clock right now. The longer I wait, the less chance. Although I haven't broken the seal yet, so that's great. Uh, greatly uh, prolongs the life. Let's wait for this to ring. I can't actually turn this off, but we're gonna have to just wait for wait it out. I apologize for this interruption. Um, the the phone lines to my house are right there behind me, below my rock collection. I can't turn it off, because then there'd be no phones to the house. There it goes. Now, where were we? It's actually, a good question. Where were we? I have no clue. Um. Anyways, let's keep going. I've got, for me, a cup right here, a glass. I, you know, a lot of people have different been calling them cups and glass. I would call this a glass because it's made out of glass. But if someone just passed me a plastic looking vessel of this same shape, I would call that a cup because it's not made of glass, it's made of plastic. 
right? It's a red solo cup, a cup of milk. This is a glass of red birch beer. Just a disclaimer, in case any of you think of this. This is non-alcoholic. I don't drink alcohol. It says beer, but just say nature is root beer. It's not a hard drink, right? It's a soft drink. No alcohol involved, right? It might be draft, might be distilled. There's no alcohol involved. Keep it clean. No liquids in my house. So you know what? Um, let's get right into it. But first, before we open this, let's look at how this thing moves, right? How this liquid moves when it's in the bottle. See, it's not very viscous there, right? It, it can move, but the surface tension, right? You see how that, this layer is moving around like that? I'm blocking it. See that layer? It takes a little bit to break that layer. So you know what? It's not, it's not like super duper thin, but it's not thick. It's not thick. Most people like things thick. And I can't, I, I have to say, I like them thick too. But when it comes to beverages, I don't want it to be this thick. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see, I want to I want you guys to hear this when I open this. Nice, nice, nice. So there's a lot you can learn about the sound it makes when the sound a bottle makes when you open it, right? You heard that um, that how initially it was tapered out and drawn out. That's a good indication that the pressure built up is kind of great. Because even when I snap it a little bit, it's already escaping at a high velocity. So I'm hearing that high-pitched sound. Thing is, it didn't all escape at once, so it's a great deal of carbon, uh, of uh, CO2 in the bottle, right? So more hints towards how carbonated it is, right? And so uh, I I'm glad for that. I wouldn't want it not that way. Cause if, if you ever open up a bottle of stale soda, or soda that's been, the seal's been broken, but someone just put the cap on and then put it in the fridge without telling you and like they didn't tell you that you opened their soda and you come back a couple days later oh look it's a nice soda and you open up huh someone's already been here hey did you touch my soda no I didn't touch your soda are you sure the seal's broken and it's flat I do not like things flat in almost all things I like none of them are flat right uh, applies to my soda very greatly right? so it's important that you have that nice fizz crackle pop right let's smell this a little definitely smells a lot like root beer I uh, I'm not very familiar with birch or any tree from the Batula genus but uh, I have built with them in Minecraft they have a light color. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a light yellow, pale yellow, when you have the wood processed and everything. But I've never smelt one. So, I don't know how similar to root beer it should smell. But it smells like root beer. If it was a little spicier. And not spicy in a hot way. Spicy and just like, there's an extra, extra little something there. Like if you mix root beer with the smell of coals, the back of coals during fall, right before winter. Because they always put a fragrance in the back to attract customers. It smells very similar to their sarsaparilla beverage. Extremely similar, actually. Um, I, I personally enjoyed their sarsaparilla beverage. But you know what? I'd like something a little different because you know I'm buying something different. I have here a cup, right here. But this cup is a glass. All glasses are not cups, and neither are all cups glasses. Because these are glasses, and this is a glass. But these aren't the same thing; just the same material. Right? Well, anyways, let's pour some of this out. Look how this pours. Oh, it's a very very vibrant red. Let's uh, like you see this mid pour. Very red indeed. Wow. Um, and these bubbles are also red. Wow. Um, the sarsaparilla beverage and the root beer beverage 
were both iconic brown. There wasn't much to them that made them uniquely colored. Their orange cream soda is also orange, and their um, vanilla caramel cream soda, lighter brown. But this, this is something unlike I've ever drink. This is like um, strawberry Fanta, that kind of color. Let's get you real close to that color. Nice. See the bubbles forming on the side? Still quite carbonated. Still a little swirling here. Hmm. Very aromatic. Very aromatic. Um, hmm. There's still a lot. There isn't as much foam as I thought. Because when I pour root beer, uh, actually just put a cap on this so I don't think it's too good. Too less carbonated. Um, when I pour root beer, there's always about a layer, maybe about this thick, maybe a little bit more, of foam that goes along with this. And this was labeled as extra creamy. And there wasn't a lot of foam. But one thing that I did not do was add ice. Ice, I see, always makes a lot of bubbles. Or um, it, uh, it uh, allows foaming to occur more freely. And so I, in, instead of that, I decided to just chill this in my fri refrigerator. And I think this uh, lowered the amount of foaminess here and I'm actually thankful for that because again I've already stated I'm not a fan of foam so let's get back to this happen right this all right so cheers let's have a sip of this this is red birch beer frost top frost top brand it's definitely different than root beer or sarsaparilla Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Got that iconic Coke ah, in the background. Let's get rid of that. And so, this beverage, and it's definitely unique. If you are a fan of sarsaparilla, you'll love this drink. It tastes just like um, if someone took sarsaparilla and added a little bit less peppermint and maybe a little bit of actual pepper. It has that kick. But you know what? It's not spicy. It, it, it's still sweet, right? Um, it has this earthy flavor to it. Um, I, would, I would compare it most similarly to like pumpkin spice. That's what I'm getting little hints of. See, I'm not very... My my, uh, my taste palette isn't very attuned to different types of trees. I don't know if I'd be able to take, tell the difference between birch syrup and maple syrup. They both are trees to me. But, but, this is unique. Tastes nothing like maple syrup. And I'm... I think that was expected. Because, why would it? It's a completely different tree. <clears throat> so... It's pretty sweet. I hear that there is a good amount of sugar in this. Uh, but would I know specifically? No, I wouldn't know. The beverage has this kind of earthy flavor. Earthy flavor, not flavor. Uh, in it so that um, it, it tastes a lot less artificial than other beverages. I would expect me to go to some kind of uh, some some old man in the woods of uh, in the woods of Virginia, and he would hand me a bottle of this. That's something I'd expect. Um, this this is about uh, sixty five percent sugar, the syrup, not the beverage. the 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 syrup is sixty five percent sugar, so it, it definitely has a lot of sweetness to it. But you know what? Something I appreciate very much in this drink is that it's not all sweetness. There are other elements to it. Um, some flavor profiles here. It says here that 
It should have a distinctive and mineral-rich caramel-like taste that is not unlike molasses or balsamic condiment or some types of soy with a hint of spiciness. I agree with the spiciness. Soy, I don't know. I, I'm not the biggest fan of soy sauce, and this didn't really remind me much of soy sauce. So I think we might be in the clear there. Um, 42% glu- uh, fructose, 45% glucose, with small amounts of sucrose and galactose. This ain't a biology class, so I don't really know what that means in this scenario. I know what they are, but I don't know what it means. But anyways, let's keep going. Um, molasses? Yeah, I could see where someone derives molasses from this. Um, mineral rich? I'm not eating rocks. If I wanted to eat rocks, I'd grab some from right over here. Lots of rocks. I'm not eating rocks, so it doesn't taste like rocks or minerals. And I don't think this tastes very much like uh, caramel. I think this is a pretty good drink. Yeah, let's, let, let's, let's pour this one more time. So I, wa- I want you to really see this red color. I think what it has most going for it is its uniqueness, right? Because there's nothing to me that makes it stand out like, wow, this is the greatest drink of all time. Uh, it's not that good in my opinion, right? It's it's good, don't get me wrong. But it's not like, whoa, what is this, G? It's amazing. I love it. This is so good. I just think it's, uh, wow, it's a pretty good beverage, man. I've had that again. Uh, look at this. I think what it has going for it is this uniqueness, right? Not everyone's heard of a birch beer, even a red birch beer. They, they've, they've heard of root beer. It's like, hey, is that something similar? Yeah. And like, would you like to have some? Sure. I'd imagine if I were to ever to invite people over to my house, which is a very unlikely event, that I'd say, hey, would you guys like something to drink? Sure, I think water is fine. Maybe a Coke if you have it. Oh, um, would you guys like to try red birch beer? Sure, what's that, G? I'll try some of that. Here you go. Wow, G, this is like red wine or something? It's really red. No, it's red birch beer. And they try it. Wow, G, this is pretty good. And I'd say, thanks, man. I got it from Rural King, one of my favorite stores. I don't know, it's been here about a year, maybe more. And it's done nothing but bring good to Marion County. So... What could this be paired with? I ask myself. I think this definitely has the possibility to make good ice cream floats. And looking up here, I uh, see that there are a lot of specific types of um, floats that comes with it. Mainly from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, great state. Not as good as Florida, but great state nonetheless. Um, If you were to make an ice cream soda float, with red birch beer and vanilla ice cream it is called a birch beer float that makes sense birch beer float birch beer and the ice cream float just like a root beer float but what i think is very interesting if you use chocolate ice cream and birch beer it makes something called a black cow i've personally never heard of this and i actually have never even thought of using chocolate ice cream when making an ice cream float because sonic used to make coke floats and they always use vanilla ice cream. Whenever I've made a root beer float, I've always used vanilla. But I think it's something different to try using chocolate ice cream. I think that could open up the door to a lot more possibilities in uh, different variations and varieties of, root, of, not root beer floats, but just floats in general. Uh, I see here that alcoholic birch beer is a thing. There is hard root beer. So, of course, there'd be an alcoholic counterpart to this. But I'm not really going to go into the details of that. I'm not the biggest fan. The recipe here is 17th century, so it's not. Let's just forget about it. For, forget about it. You, you don't need alcohol. Have a good time. You just need red birch beer. And that's it. So, let, let, you know, let's finish one more cup before I give my final review of this. Something just struck me, drinking this beverage. Have you ever heard of Robitussin? It's a child's severe cough and cold medicine. The color of this red is almost exactly as that of Robitussin. I hate Robitussin, but I love this beer, this uh, birch beer. 
It's just how that came to mind. I don't like Robitussin. And I, I don't even know why it's called cherry flavored Robitussin. Because it doesn't taste like cherry. It's anything like grape flavored medicine. It doesn't taste like grape. It tastes like purple. It tastes like red. Or it tastes like absolute garbage that you never want to drink. You'd rather have the cold to drink that. That's just my opinion there. Would this be better with ice? I don't think so. I think that ice will just make too much foam and water down the beverage. I think it's good chilled in a fridge. I would not recommend drinking this warm because there's a little bit of an aftertaste. Let's get a little bit more of this aftertaste so I can tell you about it. Okay, let's get this aftertaste. There's a little bit of an aftertaste. And I've had f friend, friends who aren't the biggest fans of root beer complain that the aftertaste of root beer is again similar to cough syrup. We brought that up with Robitussin, and I'm seeing even more and more parallels here. But I don't think it's a serious case here. A lot of, a lot of uh, people's main gripes about root beer is the aftertaste tastes like cough syrup. I've always personally disagreed to that, but to each their own. But in this beverage, there definitely is a unique aftertaste that um, isn't as desirable as the uh, uh, initial taste of this uh, birch beer. And it definitely is worse than the aftertaste of root beer or cream soda. But you know what? I think it's bearable if you just have another sip. So, I'd rate this. I'd rate this bottle of Frost Top Red Birch Beer a out of ten. This was Jeep Tell doing an emulation of the report of the week, doing an emulation of his series, running on empty food review. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Go to Rural King. Get yourself a soda.